Welcome to the Mile One Center. We're getting ready for a tip-off here with the game between the Windsor Express and your St. John Edge. Uh, it'll be an interesting night tonight. We had a lot of fireworks last night with uh, Carol English, the hometown boy, being thrown out. So, And he had a few things to say in the paper. So I guess the first comment would be uh, what's going to happen uh, that way in terms of how the officials are going to react to what he had to say and how things went. And certainly we got some concerns there. So that's going to be an interesting storyline early in the game. Next, I think you're probably talking about there's one lineup change. Brodus, who didn't play in the second half, is out again tonight, not dressed. So uh, a little nicked up, trying to get him some rest. And uh, back in the lineup is Jerry and Henry. So you're probably trading one Energizer Bunny for another. Um, a bigger Energizer Bunny. Yeah. Yeah. And, 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 and you know, and then I, I guess the last storyline for the edge would be What's going to happen? You know, can a guy like Hawes, who didn't play well in his debut last night, can he lend a little bit more to the game tonight? A guy like Bremfrong, who did play well, will he bring that same energy tonight? So it'll be interesting to see. It. We've got a lot of things going on and see how it settles in. So buckle up, folks. Here we go. Windsor Express, St. John's Edge in the second of the home and hub. Windsor handing the edge their first loss at mile one this season. Buckle up, folks, we'll have a dandy. Hinkle, Johnson, English, Des Lee, and Grandy Glaze starting things off here for the hometown edge tonight. Hinkle gets an open look for the corner, and that is certainly a good start for Charles Hinkle Hoops Hinkle and the edge. Yeah, uh, they're going to have to do a better job on that pick and roll. If they're going to run Carl and Hinkle together in that pick and roll, they're gonna, they can't leave Hinkle that open. And what can the edge do tonight, coach, to keep Maurice Jones at bay? Maurice Jones just dictated the entire pace of last night's game. What are some suggestions maybe for the edge there? I think they got to get physical with him a little bit. I, like, I would like to see them, you know, don't distort your offense necessarily, but post him up a little bit. They switch a lot of screens. Like, get him in a screen, get him switched on someone a little bigger, and cut him to the net and make him guard. Like, it, I, I just – thought with the edge last night they didn't make some of their players guard as hard as you need to make them guard all right so there it is from the professor Windsor in the edge here in the second of the home and home here at mile one lots of storylines in this one we see Fraser put the ball to the court Fraser at time had some words with the coaching staff last night he takes a long three-point attempt there good rebounding by the Windsor Express there and Demontre Harris gets a second kiss off the glass to put down two Johnson up the floor for Glaze. Glaze is going to move it to the outside for Carol English. English up top for Johnson. Johnson had a little bit of a wide open look, elected to move it around. Johnson now up top once again. Going to find Des Lee over on the side. Lee, he takes a swing and a miss there at that one. And the Windsor Express will bring the ball back down to the floor. Yeah, Johnson might have had the best look there coming off that. He was trying to set a little screen to move Glaze through, and he... And, and Jones got hooked up when he popped back out. He might have had the best look on that possession. Chad Fraser certainly was a spark plug in the game last night for the Windsor Express. Early on, it was Jones who took over. Later, Jones with an outside three shot. Good rebound there by Stutz. Stutz goes in and beats two edge players to the ball for the rebound. Fraser drives down, looking to get it to Harris. Harris is out of bounds, though, picks that one up. Edge will regain the ball. Only one of the same three officials here tonight, Doug. Yeah, they uh, got Scott Critchin, who's a professional, who's the crew chief tonight, and I think he makes a difference. He gives them a little bit more of a solid base to the refereeing crew. Here's Demontre Harris. Sorry, that's not Harris. That no, that's Keith. Keith. Shaquille Keith. How do you forget a guy named Shaquille? <laughs> Maurice Jones on the outside. Jones puts the ball to the floor, goes over for Fraser. Fraser looking to get it down to Harris. And that was denied by Grandy Glaze. Carl English, Des Lee, wide open look for three. And Lee catches and shoots. Yeah, and what I like early, if you're an edge fan, what you like is, is the way they're defending. They're keeping the ball at bay. They're keeping the ball at the three-point line. They're not allowing many easy touches. They're working harder at that end of the floor. Fraser. Outside for Stutz. Stutz had a look as if he was going to shoot. Drive to the net. We got a blocking call here. And yeah. Shaquille Keith 
Thought he might have got that call a little earlier, but he does get the call, and it is the correct call. Yeah, he, he was uh, Lee just had his hands on. If he could have just spaced himself a little bit better, I mean, uh, and he probably could have taken a charge, but he had his hands too much on. Coach goes to the bench early here for the Express, and Rayson checks in. Rayson had quite a fourth quarter last night for Windsor. Certainly shot the lights out here at mile one. Yeah, he didn't have a great start to the game, but you're right, after the halftime, he really heated up and did a lot of damage. Quick inbounds pass to Stutz. Stutz will take that one all day long. He knocks it down for two. Des Lee now in transition. Puts it out for Glaze. Glaze, spin move to the basket. That's a tough move there. Demontre Harris defended that as well as you possibly could have. Yeah, Harris doesn't have the great feet either. He's a he's a traditional big, and Glaze is do, uh, did a good job yesterday, did a good job there of putting him in the washing machine and rinsing him out. Hinkle outside for English. English got a hand in his face there. Big rebound there by Rayson. Kicks it down for Keith. Keith. Tries to float one up, can't get it there. Keith is gonna get called for the foul as Hinkle was dumped. Offensive board rebound, offensive foul, sorry, called against Keith. Edge will have the ball. 7-6, 8-26 left to go in this first quarter. St. John's Edge. Here's Johnson. Johnson for Lee. Lee's had a little bit of a hot hand here early on for St. John's. English, English guarded on the outside by big Demontre Harris. Kicks it down low for Grandy Glaze. Glaze brings it to the rack. Can't get that one to fall, though. See Glaze checking his nose. Might have got clipped a little bit on the way in. Here's Keith now. Keith out for Harris. Harris, the big man, puts it to the floor, and a nice little move there by Demontre Harris to put Windsor on top. English catches. He's going to hold. Puts it out for Charles Hinkle. Hinkle to Johnson. Johnson for English up top. That's a play you got to think that St. John's might be trying to set up all day long. Yes, but, uh, you know, like la last night, Hinkle and English both struggled to knock down a three, and if they do, that really puts a damper on the edge offense. So, uh, you know, he's going to have to make some of those shots. Here's Stutz from way outside. He can't get that one to fall, and Desmond Lee will grab the rebound for St. John. Lee to Johnson. Johnson to the outside for Hinkle. Hinkle! Finding a little sweet spot on the floor here early on. That's his second one from the same place. St. John's lead 10 to eight. Maurice Jones. Jones kicks it on the outside. Shaquille Keith way up top. Big man trying to bring it to the rack. Keith going through, gets the, gets the basket to go and will go to the line to complete the three point play. Yeah, you might like to see, especially early in the game, Keith is just a 28% shooter from the three-point line. I think early in the game, you might like to give him a couple steps and see whether he's going to make anything out there because he seems to mostly want to get to the rim. So I think you back off him, let him have something early, see if he can make it. If not, jam up to Keith. If Keith raises his 28%, maybe by one, as he sinks that free throw from the line. Once again, prof math is not my forte. Here's English, English. Steps off a screen from Hinkle, puts it back to Hinkle. He couldn't hold on to that pass. But I do, I like putting, again, I said it last night, put Stutz in that pick and roll, put him in there all game long. They, get, they put him in on the first play, it's a wide open shot for uh, Hinkle. They put him in that pick and roll, it was a wide open roll, they just missed the pass. Jones dictating the pace again. Four wins are out for Stutz, and Stutz Sinks that three, and he's got a little something to say to the edge bench there. And this, these guys from Windsor, they don't mind telling you how good they are, coach. Yeah. Here's Hinkle. Hinkle on the floor. He can't hold on to that one. Hinkle and Stutz tangled up with each other down low. Both players get away from each other now. Windsor with the ball over to half court. It's Keith. Keith. Guess there mustn't be a five second rule here. Keith kicks it up for Jones. Jones now, Jones from long distance, puts one off the glass, draws iron, couldn't get it to fall. English in for Bemprong now is checked into the game. Bemprong could not hold on to that pass. Little bit of a sloppiness here in the last few possessions down the floor. Yeah. Keith to the basket, that's not a great shot. Demontre Harris thought he might have been fouled underneath, play goes on. Hinkle for Bemprong, Bemprong wide open underneath the hoop. And that yeah. will fall under the category of a gimme. 
Yeah, and, and, and Harris is going to have trouble running the floor with Brent Prong. You've, those are baskets you need to get in these matchups in the post. Glaze should be able to outrun Harris. Brent Prong should be able to, and you should be able to limit Harris's uh, usefulness. Racing. He takes it on the outside. English posts up on him one-on-one. -on -one. Racing down low. Loses the dribble. Moves it over for Harris. Harris, little baby hook in the key. And he gets it to drop for two. Nice play by Racing, finding Harris in the key there. Johnson now down the floor. And this is probably one of the longer times this year, Doug, that we've seen the St. John's team have the same lineup with the exception of Ben Pong. We've got four to five stars. Yeah, they're leaving the their stars. They need a W tonight. I think they feel that. They've lost three of four. Uh, the one they've won was against this team in a late comeback on the road. They, they need a W tonight, I think. Bremprong takes the offensive foul down under the key. And Harris gets tagged for that one. Big, big Harris puts his arms on the referee, <laughs> having a little chat. And, you know, so that's the way it got to be done. That's, that's yeah. the way you talk to the officials. Yeah, if, you, if you're nice about it, you, can, you can have a lot to say. 4.38 left to go in the first quarter. Windsor 16, St. John's 14. We'll be right back. Four thirty-eight left to go in the first quarter. Windsor 16, St. John's 14. Back and forth affair here early on. Some new players into the game now. Jaron Skeet checking in for the edge along with Haas. Haas making an appearance here in the home court for the edge. He draws iron on his first shot. And Wally Ellenson, formerly of the Express coach, drawing yeah. into the game. Ellenson had a good game last night. He had a couple threes. He demonstrated his athleticism. And we'll see if he can bring a similar impact here tonight. Big rejection there from Ben Prong. Stutz driving to the hoop, looking to bank one in. The bank was closed, but Stutz gets it back, and he nails the three. And you said it about Stutz last night. That's his game, catch and shoot. Yeah, you can't, you can't give him as much room. Wally, As they're giving him, I don't think. Wally Ellenson, he hits a shot from somewhere down around George Street with that one. That was a long three ball there, and that's the answer here. Yeah. And here's the answer I've been looking for, Coach. Sitting by the scores table now, we see, I believe that was Jones missed a pretty easy layup. Jerry and Jackpot Henry getting checked, ready to check into this one. Stutz grabs the rebound. Use it for Jones. Jones, the floor general, marching down the floor. He's going to take some contact there with a foul. Can't see that bucket counting. No, no that'll be on the outside. Yeah, I would no, think. That'll be on the floor. So Henry is going to check into the game. Henry coming in. Who came out there, coach? I don't know. Did Lee come out? Des Lee. Lee. Must have been Des Lee, yep. So you want some intensity. The right guy's in there now. And this Grayson. is a big lineup too. Like this is about the biggest we've seen them play with Ellenson who's who's a big bodied 6'6", six, six, Henry at 6'9", and Bramprong at 6'8", six, 6'9". Six, Racing shot from the outside, grabbed by Henry on the rebound. Skeet goes to the basket. Good defense there by Stutz. Stutz rejects. St. John's will maintain possession. 14 seconds on the shot clock. Ball to be inbounded here. Henry 
in the key. Henry looking to go up with a little bit of yeah. contact, but he gets it to fall. And Jerry and Henry on the score sheet here early on. Good defensive play by Haas over there. Just couldn't manage to keep his feet out of bounds. Yeah, he had a little bit of a shaky debut last night, so he just set a good back screen there to get Henry a layup, and he almost had a steal. So looks like he's trying to get things back on a better track. Windsor, St. John's knotted up at 19, 255 left to go here in this first quarter. Windsor coming off a big win last night here at mile one. Oh, that's a trap. There's a little bit of a lapathon going on inside the key there. <laughs> yeah, you, get, you can't move both feet at the same time. <laughs> he had a sponsor sheet with him, just couldn't get any pledge as the referee blows the whistle. St. John's takes possession. Skeet going to carry the ball down the floor. Skeet right now, the only point guard out there for the edge. Skeet finds Haas. Haas with a wide open look there, and he'll drain that one from the top of the key. Yeah, that was a nice little action. They ran the pick and roll, got the switch. Everybody thought they were looking at Henry, and they ran a little pin down screen on the other side to get the Haas that wide open 15 footer. Henry all over Stutz on the outside. Stutz draws up short. Nice play there. Henry looking for a little push off there, but that's a great play by Stutz. Skeet. All by his lonesome at the top of the key. He's waiting for something to develop down low. Finds Haas. Haas in for Bremprong. Nice. That's Bremprong a nice slash. to the basket. He slashes through, and he'll go to the line for the M1. Yeah, when you have teams that switch screens a lot, that little side pin down screen where Bremprong screens down, Haas makes a little curl toward the foul line. If they switch it, Bremprong rolls to the net wide open. So it's a, it's a you know, Windsor's going to have to figure that out in terms of how they want to play that because they're not going to be able to switch it. Bremprong going to go to the line, trying to complete the three-point play. Ramsford Bremprong looked pretty good in his debut last night and continuing with solid play here in the first quarter of this one. Here's Rayson for the Express. Rayson bringing the ball down the floor. Rayson trying to find some room there, kicks it outside for Keith. Keith trying to isolate Ellenson here. He wants to go one-on-one -on -one with Wally. Ellenson to the outside, good job defense there. Ball's kicked outside for Fraser, and Fraser knocks down the three, and Windsor picking up right up, Doug, from last night. They're just hitting yeah, those they're, open they're, shots. You know, and, and it's a little bit here, you, you kind of scratch your head a little bit because Stutz has been a knockdown three-point shooter in these two games as Haas misses a shot, but he's Big only rebound. shooting 32% on the year. I mean, Fraser's been knocked down. He's only shooting 28% on the year, so... Uh, you know, is it the quality of look that they're getting here as opposed to where they've gotten in other games, or are they just finding their rhythm after some time at Christmas to get in the gym? I don't know. They like the salty air of St. John's maybe. That's because <laughs> everything is dropping for the Windsor Express here. St. John's tonight so far, Coach, they look a bit better defensively. Uh, yeah, I mean, they're playing with more energy. They're, they're doing some things a lot better. There's still a couple little breakdowns, but they're doing a lot of things a lot better. You know, but you got to tip your hat to Windsor. They're making shots. Here's Rayson now leaving for Fraser. Fraser puts it outside for Keith. Keith puts the ball to the floor. Big guy drives through. Can't get it to fall, though. Henry and Glaze in for the rebound. Glaze comes away with it. Glaze for Ellison. Ellison kicks it outside for Haas. And Tyler Haas starting to show to St. John's hometown why he was signed with this squad. Couple of nice baskets for him. Grayson drops outside, gonna move it over for Fraser. Fraser, he takes a little room on the inside. Long shot by Keith, and that's the one you were talking about earlier, Yeah, I, I think that's who you want shooting the ball. Your rotations, everything have to come around to him being the one who's left open. Yeah. There's a giveaway there by Henry, and you can see Henry coming back down the floor saying, yeah, guys, that's on me. Yeah, he got a little too fancy with the ball there. He just needed to make a fundamental play. One of those things, a player like Jerry and Henry, the energy he brings, and he's going to try things. He's going to sometimes probably play outside himself a little bit, and I guess Coach Dunlap's probably going to have to live with that a little bit with this young man. Well, it's always a, a, a juggling act as a coach with players like that. How much do I let them high wire, and, and how much do I talk them into being a little bit more boring? Yeah, there is a fine line because some guys like that, they need to do that. Yeah, It's part of the game. It's part of who they are. Henry. The great steal there. Picks the ball up, moves it outside for Ellenson. Ellenson going to stop, slow things down, puts it for Jaron Skeet. Skeet for Glaze. Glaze couldn't handle that pass. End of the first quarter. 
St. John's, 27. Windsor, 24. Pretty entertaining quarter basketball there, Doug. Why yeah, the pops? energy is a lot better on the St. John's side. I think Windsor brought the same good energy they brought, but the St. John's team brought a better energy they did last night. It makes it a better game. Uh, definitely better defense on St. John's part. They've given up eight less points than they gave up in the first quarter yesterday. Probably one of their lower scoring because, you know, the other games we've watched were all big scoring first quarters too. So this one a little bit lower. I think it's a good start, and now you see whether they can build on that going forward or what answer the Express has. So after one quarter play to St. John's Edge, 27, Windsor Express 24. We'll be back for the call for the second quarter. All right, second quarter just about to get underway here. Both teams tangle up in a good one here tonight at mile one. Another good crowd on hand at mile one. Got to be pushing, I'm guessing, maybe around 3,000. We'll get an announcement later on in that. We see Keith driving hard down low, and the big guy, Keith, he is strong down below that basket. Yeah, and Ellison's a good matchup. He's like, again, last night I wasn't sure how Ellison did defensively, but tonight he's bringing good effort. He's 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 physically athletic enough and big enough to kind of fight Keith off. And that allows him to defend him reasonably well here early. Windsor checking into the game now for Windsor. I'm looking at number 74, is that correct? 24. 24. Shane, Shane Stumpf. Stumpf. We saw Stumpf in the later. Yeah, he, he played at the game. end of last night when it was kind of out of out of touch. And again, those these back to backs, the coaches got to reach a little deeper Absolutely. into their bench and and try and keep people fresh. You know, the Windsor, you know, you remarked last night, Jones played a ton of minutes. A lot of guys, uh, Frazier played a ton of minutes. They're going to have to get a little deeper into the bench today. There's a good steal there by Keith, although Keith then turns it over for Skeet. Skeet going to stop, settle things down. He waits for the big man Henry to get down into the key. Skeet. Waving Grandy Glaze off, waiting for the big man to come out. Sets a pick for Skeet. Still not much moving on there. There's a pass inside. Henry, that's a long shot away for the big man there. Yeah. Easy rebound by Rayson. Down low for Fraser. Fraser got some contact there, but no call on the play. Ball goes off Henry out of bounds, and that will be Windsor ball. Yeah, we're going to see St. John's go to the bench now, bring back a couple starters, Hinkle and, and Johnson. Inkle and Johnson come in. We're going to see Henry and Ski check out. Decent job by those two young men. Yeah, the, uh, the bench definitely played well. They were solid. Here's Fraser now. Fraser guarded by Haas. Haas sticks with Fraser inside. Fraser goes up. Difficult shot. Can't get that to drop. Hinkle will grab the rebound. Moves it over for Johnson. Here's Johnson. Got to think Johnson tonight going to be pretty key with no Rashawn Brodus. Got to yeah. think the ball is going to be in Alex Superman Johnson's hands quite a bit. Yeah, they're going to need him to make some plays here. Hinkle, tough shot there, hands in his face from Rayson. Can't get that one to drop. Windsor will grab the rebound and come back down the floor. Here's Rayson now. Rayson waiting for Stump to come out top for his pick. Tries again, can't get it there. Nothing going, going to come over for Keith. Keith, big man, puts the ball to the floor. That's a good drive to the hoop of Keith. Just couldn't get the fall. Hinkle with a good rebound there. Kicks it for Johnson. Johnson on the outside, wide open. 
And here's Rayson. Rayson's going to take a long three attempt. Rayson, nothing but net on that one from Braylon Rayson. I think you got to live with that one a little bit if, if he's going to pull up that far back. Yeah. If he's going to do that consistently, yeah. that kid can play. <laughs> Out to the outside for Ellenson now. Ellenson, he fakes going up, trying to get a little bit of extra real estate off the pick from Glaze. Hinkle, down low. Hinkle gets the foul, puts it up. And Hill, Charles Hinkle Hoops Hinkle will go to the line, looking as Carl English and Desmond Lee going to check back into the game. And once again, the St. John starters back in. And this is sort of the modus operandi, Coach Jeff Dunlap. This is more of what we've seen of the edge so yeah. far. Yeah, the only thing I would say is he's pulling the trigger on putting the, the starters back in a little bit quicker. Again, sensing today that, that they need a good performance today. They need a W, so he's probably going to ride his starters a little harder. Um, you know, for whatever reason, Carl didn't play a ton of minutes last night. <laughs> so they might be able to get a few more tonight. There you go. And, uh, you know, the, these guys realized they they had never had a lot of games. They, the last time they played was December 17th. December yeah. 17th to January 9th. Yeah, that is quite a spell. But now they're looking at, what is it, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine games between January 9th and January 21st. Yeah. That's busy. Yeah, the, the reality is they were a late addition to the league. The schedule was already drawn up, and they had to try and fit their games into an existing schedule, which has led to, you know, St. John's is going to have a bit of a tough go of it in their first year schedule-wise. And that's not the cry about it. That's just the way it is. Yeah. It, it had to be that way to get them in, and yeah. we understand that. So Coach Dunlap has got a game plan in place. He's going to be using guys a lot. Yeah. Des Lee, he's got the finger roll to the basket, and he'll drop that one for two. St. John's back in the lead here. Yeah, and, and again, Lee had a great game last night. He seems to come out with good energy again tonight. Rayson. Rayson seems to be taking the part of Jones tonight. Yeah. Braylon Rayson did, yeah, they did very, great, very good. Yeah, they did a great job on Jones, but they're going to have to figure out Rayson now. Lee to the outside for Carl English. English. Guarded by Stump. English going to the hoop. English will get the foul. Not in the shooting role there, I wouldn't think. That no, no. They'll inbound that one. 31-30, St. John's, 8.54 left to go here in the first half. And we see the Express go to their bench now, and Stutz and Jones coming back into the game. Stump and I believe it's Keith. Yeah. It's going to be coming out here. No, Otley, Otley Jr. Jr. Yeah. English takes the ball on the inbounds. Ball's knocked out of his hand. They'll do it all over again. So in that case there, Coach, does the clock reset to 14? No, 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 no. It's just knocked out of bounds, so it stays at whatever it is. Okay, so 11 seconds on the shot clock. Johnson going to take the ball. Edge looking to set something up here. He'll just throw it in for Carl English. He's wide open. Carl kicks it outside for Hinkle. Hinkle, long way out. Can't get that one to drop. Nice rebound there by Glaze, though, but Glaze could not get the put back to go. And away come the Windsor Express. Here's Rayson. Rayson. He's almost double teamed up top there. Hinkle lost his man momentarily. Rayson inside, and that's just too easy for yeah. Windsor. Yeah, allowing that, the, the dribble penetration, they did a good job the first few minutes of the game really keeping people out, but they're starting to break down a little bit again on the dribble penetration. Johnson into the corner for English. English just can't get it to drop. No, I, I like what they're doing. I like what they're running, and they're getting Stump involved, or, or Stutz involved in a lot of screens, but they're not making the shots. Easy basket there for DeMontre Harris. Harris spins open and gets a nice little look to the lane. 34-31, three-point lead here for Windsor. Johnson up top. Johnson controlling, kicks it over for Desmond Lee. Lee into the post for Hinkle. Hinkle trying to kick it in for Glaze. Lost control of that one. Here's Fraser now in transition. Fraser will drive it to the basket, and that'll be a five-point lead for Windsor. That's their biggest one so far of this game. 7.30 left to go here in this First half, Hinkle, Hinkle into the loose. He got some contact there from Harris. Couldn't get the fall though, but Hinkle will go to the line. Yeah, and that's what you want to see them doing. Like if they're going to play those two little guards together, one of them has to guard someone of some decent size, either Lee or Hinkle, and that should be an opportunity to post them up. And, and, and if you get that opportunity, you have to take it. 
Hinkle going to go to the line. We see Bremprong coming back into the game. He's going to take Grandy Glaze out, and that's a little uh, tit for tat. We'll probably see quite a bit. Yeah, I, I, I think that's a nice tag team. Like, really, now you've got you've got a couple of good athletes there. Uh, Bremprong is probably a little bit more of a solid fundamental player. Uh, Glaze a little bit more of the athlete, but you know that they can do a lot of the same things, and and you can trade them in and out without losing anything necessarily. Hinkle perfect from the line. Brings St. John's back to within three. Jones felt Desmond Lee on his back a little. Foul call from behind by Lee. St. John's not in any foul trouble right now, but they're ones you don't want to give away too much. Yeah. Back to the half court. Stutzel inbounded for Maurice Jones. Jones, ball to the floor, going to kick it over for Fraser. Fraser. Wants Harris to come out top. Fraser managed to come in in penetration again, but Bremprong there with some great defense for St. John's. He just strips the ball away. English up top. Gets a screen from Bremprong, looking to put it down low for Lee. Couldn't get there, and Carl did a good job to get back and not get a defensive foul. Bremprong once again denies inside. And Bremprong doing a great job on defense here for the St. John's edge. Yeah, like I said, positioning-wise, he's very solid. Like, he knows where to be. He's, he, you know, he's 36 years old. He's played this game all over the world. Again, those type of guys, they can make up for a lot with positioning, what maybe a couple of steps that they lose with time. The term Wiley veteran is sometimes overused, but with these gentlemen here, you can certainly see it. Sometimes you see guys like Brem Prong and, and English, they, they think the game at another level altogether. Yeah, yeah. Bremprong is going to go to the line. He'll shoot a couple. 33 St. John's, 36 for Windsor. Bremprong steps up. He'll use the back of the rim to nonchalantly drop that one. This one to bring St. John's to within one. Bremprong can't get that one to go. Hinkle trying to sneak in from behind, grab the rebound. Nothing doing though, and Jones will bring it up the floor for Windsor. And Windsor really sticking to their game plan. They are looking to penetrate, 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 and if yeah, they're the caught, one, they'll kick it. The one adjustment I like, the, again, that the edge has made defensively is from the top of the key. Now they're starting to get on Windsor's right hand. They're making all, you know, sometimes you think these are pro players and they can go right and left. 90% of the players in the world make their plays with one hand, either right or left-handed. So I think, you know, getting up and taking away that right hand has given them a little bit more trouble, right? Lee makes the first, he'll line up the second one. Now Jones setting it up for Windsor. They'll get a little flare screen. Stutz will take the three. Van Prong on the boards. Here comes Carl. Mm. Tried to get a little bit too fancy there maybe and dribbles it, but it goes off of Otley Jr. and we're going to have a timeout. So the game tied, 5.49 left. We'll take a little break.
Bremprong back to the line for St. John's. Both teams knotted up here at 36. 5.45 left to go in this opening half. Bremprong will grab the lead for the edge from the foul line. Yeah, and he's made a difference as he came on the floor. That It looked like the Express was starting to grab the momentum, but Bremprong has swung it back the other way with his defense and a little bit of his energy on O. That foul shot falls a little bit short there. Yeah. Almost looked like it might have been by design as Bremprong was pretty quick off the line coming in, but Windsor does grab the rebound. Here's Fraser. Fraser up top, guarded by Lee. Good job see, by Lee. Yeah, you just see how Lee won't give him that right hand, right? Stutz uh, coming through the lane. St. John's looking for the travel, but instead, Bremprong is going to get ding for the foul. He'll get called for the push, and Stutz will go to the line. And Stutz has been. I wouldn't say he's been the best player for Windsor tonight. I, for my money, it's racing, but Stutz, the offensive leader for sure. Yeah, he's been, he's, been, he's their leading scorer on the year. It's just over 19 points a game. But, uh, again, he's doing it with a three-point shot in his right hand. You'd like to see Brem Prong, at, you know, anything. If, if, you're, if your philosophy is for sideline, then when the ball is outside the, what we, the, the channel, that sort of area that runs between the two keys, then you force a baseline. But when it's in the middle, you got to take away the hand that the person scores with. Stutz on the line. He drains his second one. And Windsor take the lead back and forth for both teams. St. John's now in the bonus. So with a little over five minutes left, they're going to go to the line every time. Jaron Skeet drives to the rim. Can't get it to fall, though. Jones coming back quickly for, Saint jo for the Express. Ball's knocked out of bounds. Good defense there by St. John's to deny, but the Express will hold on. Otley Jr., he's underneath looking for someone to open up quickly. Jones on the outside. Jones takes some contact there from Skeet. No call. Play continues to the outside. Here's Fraser. Fraser penetrates down low. Fraser with some good work to get it through. Just couldn't get it in. English. To a wide open Bremprong underneath. He kicks it outside for Skeet. Skeet to Hinkle. Down the corner for English. English can't get it to drop. There's a rebound there for Lee. Lee couldn't get it. Good effort there by St. John's. Yeah. Got to give him credit there, Coach. <laughs> Certainly not from lack of trying. No, they were working hard to keep it alive. They, but, again, the same sort of thing that's plagued in the last two days. I mean, that was great ball movement, swing the ball all the way around the horn, wide open for Carl, and he just can't get it over the front of the rim. So, uh, you know, they, they've got to find a way to knock down some of these open threes. Just looking at the stats here online, not very often you look at the stats and you look down the line to see where Carl English is. Yeah. Carl is struggling tonight. And the, the, the thing is, though, guys of that caliber, just like that, something will happen, something like we talked about last night about waking up the Giant. If, if you're, yeah. you see a couple of guys on, on Windsor, they like to talk and all part of the game, absolutely. But I think I'd just leave Carl alone. Oh, yeah. If yeah, he's especially if he's in the funk. Yeah. yeah, just let him stew on it on his own. <laughs> Don't absolutely. remind him of it. <laughs> because he's got that type of talent. Uh, should he just something get him going? Watch out. There's a long shot by Skeet. And Jaron Skeet, you can see the smile on his face. A little yeah. monkey off his back with that one. It's almost a team monkey. Like I said, Hinkle's hit a couple, but nobody else has really made anything. Jones from the outside, and that's as rare as a dodo, bite, dodo bird sighting. We haven't seen Jones miss... Very like many. we said last night, he was, he's really, really good in that mid-range. He has not shot the three well here over the two days. So I think if you can keep him out there, you've got a chance. English ball in his hand. He's guarded tough by Keith. Ball bounces underneath. That's Otley Jr. Sorry, Otley Jr. getting the assignment to guard Carl English and doing a pretty good job there for the Windsor Express. Mm -hmm. And English driving hard to the lane. Manages to keep the ball for St. John's. Ball's going to be inbounded. They're looking for Carl underneath. Ball's put in. That's kicked away by Jones. Now, in that situation, does the clock reset? He um, kicks it like that. No, it wouldn't reset. It would be whatever it is. So, okay. so it is at a fresh shot clock for now, but we'll assume that's what it was anyway. Yeah. Haas, wide open underneath. Ball gets thrown out to Charles Hinkle. Hinkle. In for Bremprong. Bremprong couldn't hold on to that pass. 
Yeah, Hinkle should have just taken that to the net and got what he got kind of thing. It was a, it was a difficult pass. Well, that would have been a difficult pass for anybody to catch. I like the defense of this Anthony Otley Jr. He's, he's, he's tough in the paint. He's hard to – I think they're driving on him. They know yeah. <laughs> there's no free pass in the key there tonight. Here's Jones. Jones out for Fraser. Fraser's going to catch and shoot one. That one's not going to fall, though. Rebounded by English. English carries the ball down the floor. English – Kicks one in for Haas, back out for English. St. John's with a, you would think, a pretty good shooting lineup out here now with English, Haas, Skeet, and Hinkle. As Carl makes a nice little fadeaway jumper there. Yeah, you'd almost like to see them go to some spread pick and roll here with four shooters and Bremprong roll into the net and see what, what the Express can do with that. Fraser. Drives to the basket, gets by Haas, and he got a step on Haas then and takes a little free stop to the route. Little discussion here between St. John's and the officials. Not too happy after Fraser made the shot. He took the ball. He made two or three steps with it. Yeah, and then he's getting warned now by the officials to leave the ball alone. So that's the delay of game warning there. So there you go. Well, I'm sure Mr. Fraser didn't mean to do that. And <laughs> If you understand the term facetiously, that is exactly what I mean. Fraser, pretty veteran move there to try to have his team come back. Bremprong in low. Can't quite handle the ball, the big fella. Everybody going to the floor trying to get it. Yeah, ball this, will stay in Windsor's hands. This is the sort of game action stuff, like we said last night. The, the thing with Bremprong is he's going to have to settle back into game action and the speed of everything. So he just said... He's had a number of balls kind of go through his hands and stuff, or he, he hasn't quite been ready for it, whereas the speed of the game is what he's adjusting to. He can clearly play the game at a high level. He just has to adjust back to the speed of it. Absolutely. That's And once that clicks for that man, watch out. The edge have got to keep it here. Here's Jones. Jones spins away. There's that little mid-range jumper for him. Couldn't get that one to drop, though. Skeet's going to take it down the floor for St. John's. Here's Jaron Skeet. Skeet. Finds his way into the key, throws one up off the basket, just sort of hoping to get that one to drop. Yeah, yeah, you got to be able to finish a little bit with a little bit more solidity than that one. And St. John's take advantage of a turnover the other way. Good effort there by Carl English coming back on defense yeah. for the edge. 2-0-2 left to go here in this opening half. St. John's lead by a score of 42-40. And a back and forth affair here at mile one center. Yeah, it's definitely a little bit more of a grind than it was last night. The teams are fighting a little harder. It's a little harder to find those shots. Johnson now, Johnson's checked back into the game. Puts one down low for English. English is hit on that one. He goes up to the line. Otley Jr. Don't think he's arguing with the official. I think he's mad at himself for that uh, foul. I think it was just, again, that's just a veteran move where Carl catches, knows Otley's going to be there to be underneath him and just kind of leans in a little bit and takes that shot as opposed to a lot of players might turn or fade on that and, and not get that contact. English. At the line, he will continue his... Mastery of the free throw line. English sinks two, gives St. John's a four point lead. Here's Jones now, Jones to the outside for Keith. Keith, he likes putting the ball to the floor, driving inside, puts one inside for Otley Jr. Good help there by Hinkle, almost rejected Otley, but Otley Jr. with the putback for two. Yeah, Otley took a few steps there too, he got away with that. Johnson looking for Haas on the outside. Haas down low for Grandy Glaze. Glaze puts the ball to the floor to the outside for Alex Johnson. Johnson wide open Glaze. Yeah. I don't know if Glaze realized how open he was there. No, and, and, and again, they're, the thing I like is they're involving Stutz in those pick and rolls all the time, and it's just the switches aren't working, and, and you know Stutz can't control the ball, and the little guy can't control the big on the switch. So it, it's good to see them using that. Jo Jones drive through a no man land there. Carol English with a wide open three, could not get it to drop though. Yeah, he's he's overthinking it. You could see him kind of stop and adjust and adjust. He's got to just let it fly. And Windsor strike in transition as Shaquille Keith drops one to bring the Express back within two. Here's Johnson. Johnson, nice pass in for Glaze. Glaze is yeah. pretty much jumped on from behind, but he gets it to fall. 
And like I said, I, it, you know, we get carried away sometimes that we think that this is an egalitarian game and everybody has to touch the ball. No, no, they don't. Like, if you've got a defender like Stutz, I'm putting him in the pick and roll every You're single possession. You're way over possession. my head now. Egalitarian game. I don't even <laughs> – I got the internet here, but I got to look that one up. I'm having a tough time adding how many fouls get you into bonus, and you're throwing that at me. Well done. You're not the professor for nothing. I can guarantee you that much. Last 30 seconds of this one. St. John's back with a five-point lead. Here's Jones now. Four-second differential between the shot and game clock. St. John's will get their hands on the ball for the last shot of this opening half. I think they're just going to isolate Jones here on this. Jones and Johnson. Jones, nice crossover. Yeah. Johnson, good job on defense, but oh. the foul is called, and Jones will get a trip to the foul line. Johnson did a pretty good job there. Just yeah, he got him going left. He got him the way he wanted to go. You, you, you make him try and finish over the bigger player. It's, it's, it's a tough call, but, you know, I think you live with that play more than you live with something uh, easier than that they were getting earlier in the game where they were driving, helping, and getting the easy layups. Eight seconds left in the opening half. We're going to see Eric Parker check into the game here for the Windsor Express. First time we've seen this young man come in off the bench, a rather large individual. Yeah, this is a offense-defense sub. They're getting stuts out because they don't want to put in another pick and roll. Eight seconds remain in the game. Jones hits both from the foul line, and we're going to see Stump. Yeah, they, they got everybody the but Jones out there trying to be big enough to handle these pick and roll situations. So, Coach... Jeff Dunlap's going to call a timeout with eight seconds remaining. St. John's going to look to extend their three-point lead in this opening half. St. John's 49, Windsor 46. What are we looking for from the edge in this final play, Coach? I, I think the key is not to overthink it. Sometimes you try and get too fancy in these situations. There's eight seconds left. Like, you're looking to put the ball in somebody's hands, get a shooter in each corner, get the ball in one of your quicker players hands if you can get them a little back screen or something that gets them going at the net on the catch and just let them create off of that i think anything other than that maybe a little pin down but really with eight seconds left i'm just looking for some penetration and read just a little interesting aside they're looking at the windsor coaching staff the coach and the assistant go out on the floor way out underneath the basket just about they have their discussion out there then they come back to the bench. Yeah, and, and that happens a lot now, in the, especially in the pro game. You see that where the, the, the coaches confer and you're trying to give your assistants the, the I don't know if it, they really have input or give them the idea they have input. It, it, I think it differs from case to case. I got to think of the two-man operation. It probably does. Yeah. I'm um, looking at the edge bench. There's, I'm looking at one, two, three, four, five suits down there. So. Yeah, there's a lot of people. <laughs> I don't know if Coach Jeff Dunlap's taking that much input down there. <laughs> but, hey, you never know. Johnson now. Johnson puts the ball to the floor. Edge with four seconds. Outside for English. English going to put the last shot up. Finger roll goes in. Can't get it to drop, though. Yeah, they got it. It was a nice look off the handoff and got him in the middle for a nice look. It just didn't go down. So, first half in the books. St. John's 49, Windsor 46. You're watching the NBL here. We'll be back for the call of the second half.
So second half just about to get underway here at mile one center to St. John's Edge with a 49-46 lead over the Windsor Express. Doug Partridge here in the booth with me, Steve Power. Doug, set up this second half for us. Let's look at it from the home team perspective. What did the edge have to do to make sure to get the two points here tonight? Well, I think, you know, sometimes as Carl fires up the three, sometimes you're a BMW and sometimes you're a K car. I mean, a K car is a nice reliant automobile, you know, like, so sometimes you got to grind it out and that's what they're doing here tonight. Oh, I'm dying on the inside. I've never <laughs> a K car. Right out of the uh, bare naked ladies, a nice reliant on. Oh my goodness, you're killing me. I'm the one slows me the jokester. Des Lee kicks one down for Hinkle. Hinkle shot draws iron. That one's going to come down. And right away, the Windsor Express taking advantage of a couple of missed shots here by St. John's. But again, you see, they, they struggle to finish on that left hand side of the floor. So as long as you can keep them going that way, you got a chance. Jones couldn't finish on that one. Johnson takes it down the other way now for St. John's. Johnson posting in on Jones. Mm. And Johnson missed the layup, but Desmond Lee comes out of nowhere and slams it home. Yeah, that was nasty. The professor liked that one. Yeah, yeah, that was nasty. <laughs> Jones, he's going to hold the ball up, waiting for something to open up down lead. Jones. Coming off the dribble, had to put it into the hands of Stutz. Stutz going to give it back to Jones. St. John's, look, they're, they're pleasant enough to be letting Jones penetrate. Lee <laughs> holds on to one, kicks it over for English. This could be a changer, but English couldn't get it to drop. Tough luck there for Carroll. Keith finding Harris inside. Good defensive play there. Yeah, Hinkle was just By there. And, yeah, he got a hand on that shot, tipped it out of bounds there. I like the way St. John's is playing. They're playing with energy. I think they've got, they kind of got Windsor on the ropes, but they got to make some shots. If they made some shots, this one could be over. Yeah. I, know, I know we're just starting the second half, but St. John's defensively playing, I won't say very well, but I'll say pretty well. English lobs one down for Hinkle. Hinkle lays one off the glass for St. John's. Jones. Tell uh, Jones a little bit frustrated here. We haven't seen this from this young man. Yeah, no, they're, like I said, they're doing a good job of making him go the way they want him to go, and then they're tipping the ball if he lets it ride up a little high on his dribble. Shaquille Keith driving down the lane. Hinkle gives him a bit of a hard foul there. Yeah, he wasn't going to let him rise but up and dunk it. And you yeah. made the point earlier, too. The young man, not exactly the most proficient free throw shooter, so why not put him to the line, make him earn it? 53-48 yeah. St. John's early in the third quarter. 9.45 left to play. Keith doesn't look. Johnson will kick it over. He'll go pick and roll. There's that Hinkle English pick and roll. Doesn't quite work this time, but it's been good for them so far through the game. Kind of. Uh, you can't be that soft, soft on Stutz. He's a good shooter. You got to be up there. Hinkle's got to try and close that gap a little bit more. All tied up here at 53. Grandy Glaze up top. Going to move it over for Desmond Lee. Lee up top for English. English fakes a shot. He elects to come down through. English goes up and under. And he got Demontre Harris in a poor position there. Yeah, Harris again. did a good job not fouling. Yeah, he, Harris doesn't have the feet to stay in front of him. Here's Lee with the steal. Lee coming all the way to the basket, and Lee finishes it off there. And St. John's starting to show their favorite Scandinavian country is not Finland because they are all Finnish here and no Swedish <laughs> on these plays tonight. Fraser going to take a long three ball there. That one bounces the outside right into the hands of Racing on the rebound, though. Grandy Glaze comes up. St. John's, they've got some numbers in transition. English. Back for Glaze, down in the corner for English. Foul away from the ball there. That one's going to go against Glaze. Yeah, they're going to give him the moving screen foul there on the pick and roll. It's unfortunate. I think that would have been a big hoop again. It, it just seems like the edge can't get that bucket that would break it open or get a little separation for him. Racing. Bringing the ball up the floor, Rayson trying to get his hot hand going again for the Windsor Express. Here's Rayson guarded by Johnson. Johnson 
Got a hand up in the face there. Racing got some separation. Got a good shot off, though, but the rebound is grabbed by Carl English. Here's English. English over for Glaze. Glaze puts the ball down. Glaze under the basket. Good effort there on a second regroup. And there's a good example there, Doug, of what you were talking about earlier. Otley went hard after that rebound, not depending on the officials. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Don't rely on somebody else to make a choice. You go get the ball. That shot goes short from Harrison. All of a sudden, the Windsor Express starting to be a little bit cold from the field goal perspective. Yeah, and, and really the edge need to take advantage here. They need to make a little push, try and get up by 8, 10 points. Glaze now on the outside. Looking to penetrate. Harris guards him, so he's going to kick it out for Hinkle. Hinkle shot draws iron. Desmond Lee underneath. He got bounced away, so that foul is going to go against Stutz. Good yeah. hustle here. The energy level, the edge, a lot higher tonight. Yeah, though. yeah, it's just coming down to shot making now. Like I said, sometimes you're that, that fired up team that everything is clicking for you, making everything, and sometimes you really got to grind it out. And, and it looks like this is going to be one of those nights where they just got to keep working it. Here's a good inbound play and a big defensive rejection there by Demontre Harris, though. Harris going to get called for the foul, and you can see the Windsor Express coach not very happy about that one. Yeah, I think I think the, the official's going to say that he got him down low on the foul. Uh, I think that, you know, the block part of the foul was clean. They might have been tangled up body-wise uh, lower down. I really like the job the official did just in, though. The coach said, come here. The coach was oh, rather yeah. animated. The official yeah. came over to him, and he talked him down. Yeah, and all like I said, he's, he's a professional. Like, yeah. he, he's, he's very solid. He's refereed all around the world. He's got his feet card. He knows how to deal with people. Coach realized he's not going to change his mind. He got the explanation, albeit probably not the one he wanted. But, <laughs> yeah. hey, that's it's give and take at this level. It's give and take yeah. in all sports. And the good coaches and the good officials, they do it. And that's a great job there yeah. by that young man. Glaze wow. gets both free throws. Free throws sank by Double G, Grandy Glaze. Here's Stutz from the outside. Stutz draws iron. Stutz has usually been money in the bank from there. And... A six-point lead here for St. John's, their biggest of tonight. Johnson inside for Glaze. Glaze outside for Desmond Lee. Lee, a little bit rejected on that one by Keith. Keith, great job catching that one, putting it under the hoop. That's a great play there defensively and offensively by Shaquille Keith. Yeah, Lee Lee never really got his feet set on that three-point shot. I would have liked to see Johnson had Stutz at the foul line. I, I think Johnson should have pulled up and taken that shot. I, the only complaint I would have tonight from the edge's perspective is that I feel like Johnson has turned up, turned down a couple of chances to score that I'd like to see him take advantage of. So Grandy Glaze after that air ball is going to have a seat on the bench. We'll see Bremprong. Chip back into the game for St. John's. Lee up top on Fraser. Fraser trying to draw some contact going in. Fraser, how was that not a travel there? Fraser put to the basket, couldn't get it to drop. Des Lee now going to move it over for Johnson. Johnson kicks it outside for Lee. Down for Charles Hinkle. Hinkle puts it to the floor. Hinkle, a little bit of separation there from Stutz. Just couldn't get one to drop. And the Windsor Express will come back down the floor. Shaquille Keith. Keith, certainly not afraid to come in. Good, strong move to the basket on Ben Prong. And he gets it to drop. Yeah, and, and again, if you're an Edge fan, you're a little bit nervous now because they had a real chance there to open this game up a little bit, and they didn't take advantage of it. They weren't able to finish plays or make shots. And... And now you're back to a two-point situation. Johnson outside for English. English couldn't net one to drop. Carl English still firing away, though, coach, whenever he gets the opportunity. And that's what shooters do, hey? Yeah, you got you got to, you know, it goes two ways. You got to make them till you miss, and you got to miss them till you make. You can't, you can't stop doing what you do. So we'll have a timeout call here with 521 left to go in the third quarter. St. John's with a slim two-point lead, 59-57 over Windsor.
St. John's, Jaron Ski checking back into the game along with Tyler Hawes. English and Hinkle still in it as from the starting five. Brimpong also a big presence down low. Hawes goes to the basket. We got a jump ball called. Yeah, he's, he's got a, the, the shoulder that he's got on the defender's side and the elbow that's on the defender. He's got to get it up almost like a chicken wing to protect that ball a little bit better. How big is Tyler Hawes? Coach? He's listed at 6'5", and I, I think he's fairly close to that, if not on it. From up here, we're, we're fairly high up. We, we mentioned last night as well that he doesn't look 6'5 from up here. No, he's a little slight. Yeah. Here's Skeet. Skeet for English. English up top. English now isolated by Stutz. English trying to take advantage of that matchup. Pulls up, though, falls a little short. Racing with the ball. Racing stops, settle things down. Want to put the ball over. I liked it. It was Jones last night. Tonight, I, I really like to play a racing early on, but I tell you what, the guy doing the most damage, guy just went to the hoop, Shaquille Keith. Shaquille Keith, he's, yeah. He's, he's had a heck of a game here for the Windsor Express. Yeah, and, 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 again, the only thing I, I would say is that when you bring him up off that curl screen at the top of the, the key, what, why are you going out there? Like, why are you getting caught in that action? Why aren't you just sliding underneath the screen and saying, Come to me, big fellow. Yeah. Like, I'll take the charge. You know, I think you've got to make him catch that ball and shoot it. And if he can't catch it and shoot it, you got your answer. Keith at the line, been considerably better tonight. Struggled yeah. a little bit last night, but he's making the most of his opportunities here this evening is Shaquille Keith. Keith made the first one. Here's number two. Nothing but net on that one. Keith at first lack last night, he looked like a little bit of a Jackie Moon type free throw shooter. I was waiting for the old granny <laughs> shot at one point, but tonight, certainly a lot better. Haas, shot from the outside, that's a yeah, nice shooter. And, and you saw it there one. where he kind of leaned that shoulder into the defender, got the elbow up, so he got his separation, right? Racing drives to the hoop, can't get at the drop though, is racing. A little Ooh. bit of a collision out uh, there. He between. grabbed Bremprong to try and keep the numbers even. Yeah. <laughs> Carl English had no part of it anyway. You see Coach Denlap up on the bench leading his case there, saying it's not WWE, guys. Down low. Here's Fraser. Fraser, tough shot to make there. Big rebound underneath. Fraser grabs it again, and good second effort there by Fraser yeah. for Windsor. There's that Hinkle English pick and roll. Hinkle can't get it to go, but there's Bramprong. But he's just fighting the finish a little bit. But Skeet comes up with a big three. Again, if you're the edge, if you're an edge fan, you'd, you'd like to get a stop here, maybe get another bucket, try and really start building. You, you, they really need to try, because otherwise they're going to open the window for the Express to come in late and steal this game. That's a big one. Big hit there by Carl English, and that's starting to get the fans into it a little bit. Nothing like the hometown hero putting a three in from the side. And this is the loudest we've heard mile one this year. Yeah, yeah, they, they, they were wait, just waiting for him to knock one down, and that, that, that gets that eight-point window. Like we said, they needed to try and get some spread here, and, and credit to the, the Windsor coach, I believe it's Mike Jones, who takes a quick timeout. He's not going to let that ride. He, he knows that... His team is struggling to score a little bit, and he needs to try and nip this run in the bud. He doesn't want to let it get out. 69-61, biggest lead of the night for the edge. We'll be right back.
Jones setting up shop now. Windsor looking for a late third quarter answer here. And the edge starting to put things together. There's a miss there by the Express. Brem Prong with the rebound, and that falls to the hands of who else? Jerry and Jackpot Henry. English to the outside. Skeet, long three ball, and that is a dagger yeah. by Skeet. And now we're starting to break it open. So Skeet finally finding his touch. He went through a few games there where he was really struggling to hit the three, but he's finding it here tonight, and it couldn't come at a better time for the edge. Jones down low for Stutz. Stutz driving him below the hoop. He draws some contact for the foul, and he'll go to the line. And when the edge starting to take over a little and get some momentum on the side, that's just what the doctor ordered for Windsor. Yeah. Slow it down, get to the line. Hey, coach. Yeah, and, and that's a, you know, Stutz is a veteran player, and like we said, he's a good scorer. And, and he sensed there that they needed something. And if he couldn't make the shot, he needed at least to get to the free throw line. 72, 62 now as Stutz makes his shot from the line. 153 left to go here in the third quarter. Neither team in serious trouble in this quarter in foul. St. John's with four, Windsor only with two. Yeah, it's been a very clean game. There hasn't been a ton of fouls, so there hasn't been the need for very many whistles. Here's Skeet. Skeet puts the ball to the floor. He's guarded by Jones. Skeet's gonna move it over for English. English, still guarded by Otley Jr. Finds a little separation there. Carl just can't get it to drop. Yeah, uh, Otley Jr. didn't, he didn't adjust himself. And he, while he was kind of watching the play, and what he should have done, he was standing out of bounds. He should have got his feet on the floor so he could have rebounded that ball. 133 left to go in the third quarter. St. John's will inbounds the ball. And Windsor sensing the game slipping a little bit. It's Keith back out there who's probably been their leading scorer tonight. And probably their best player too. Yeah. On both sides of the floor, defense and offensively. Inbound to English. English guarded by Otley Jr. English with a good, strong move to the inside. Yeah, and this is the most we've seen him play off the dribble in all of his games at home. And, and obviously, sensing he's struggling a little bit with his shot, he's done a good job of trying to get to the rim and generate points in another direction. Keith goes to the basket. He got virtually lassoed there by English. English puts his hands up, says, yep, that yeah. was me, big guy. Yeah. Again, you don't want to give them anything easy. You want to make them earn their buckets. Outside for Stutz. Stutz got Ben Prong in the air. Stutz going to bring it to the lane, and Stutz with a nice finger roll, 4-2. to two. Skeet now. Skeet bringing the ball down the floor. And St. John's now with 74 points on the board. English looking for a three ball. That one's going to fall short. Haas trying to sneak in for the rebound. I'm going to talk a little bit about Rashawn Brodus tonight. That I think Jaron Skeet's done a pretty good job in there, but I do think they do miss Brodus handling that ball. Well, I th I, also they miss Brodus, his energy defensively. And there's you know, Mr. Energy again, Henry, getting a steal there. Skeet from the outside. Four, yeah, he's feeling it now, he, he, he's alive. Yes, sir, that is what that young man can do for the St. John's team. Yeah. Trying to get the fans into it, and they are. Listen to this crowd here at mile one. Final seconds of this third quarter, about a five second differential between shot and game clock. Jones up top, guarded by Henry. Henry out to the face of Good Jones. Deep. That shot's not gonna oh. fall. Big rebound by Otley Jr. though, and Ben Pong with the foul, and that one hurts a little for St. John. So yeah. much momentum on their side. Yeah, Henry had to stop, play great D on Jones, force him into a contested jump shot. But Bremprong has struggled a little bit with his hands, and it's, it's been unfortunate. Like we said, I think it's just a, a timing issue. Um, and, and that one was similar. The, the ball is right there, and it just popped right through his hands, right to the other team. So three seconds left. Otley Jr. going to go to the line. St. John's have got Henry sent down the floor. Got a substitution coming in. It's going to be Glaze. Going to take out Ben Pong. A little bit of offense for defense, you got to think there. I think they're going to look and see if Jerry they can get Henry something long make, down the floor here on the pass. Henry making himself small, trying to sneak around. My goodness, this kid Henry, I like him. Yeah. Henry shot, that one's not going to be any good. Buzzer goes. After three, St. John's 77, Windsor 68. 
Fourth quarter coming up, St. John's Edge basketball. Fourth quarter, all set to get underway here. St. John's gonna put to the floor. Jaron Skeet, Jerry and Jackpot Henry, Grandy Glaze. Looks like Wally Ellenson over there on the far side and Desmond Lee to start this fourth quarter off. Ellenson, guarded by Stutz. Ellenson fakes as if he's gonna go inside. Out for Henry, Henry trying to go to the rack. Henry spin move, that's a tough shot there and the kid drops it for St. John's. And we've got an offensive foul called against Keith. Keith is almost saying, yeah, I'll take that. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, Henry was getting in there, kind of uh, getting into him a little bit, grabbing on him, and Keith just forearm shivered him or headbutted him. So Henry may have been talking to him or something. You can see, <laughs> Henry getting, and we we call this. This is what St. John's missed last night. Yes. Jerry, Jerry and Henry brings this, because we saw last night, we saw Fraser sort of get under the skin a little of the St. John's team. Yeah. Henry's just sort of saying, yeah, okay, uh, two can play that game. Skeet will probably want that shot back. Uh, He's I think he got caught feet. in the middle. I think he was thinking about throwing a lob to Glaze, but Glaze wasn't looking for it, and he had to try and try. It, it was just ugly. Jones, Jones spin under the basket. Good effort there by the diminutive point guard, but he couldn't get it to fall. Henry, outside for Desmond Lee. Lee down for Glaze. Glaze tries to get rejected from the inside by Stutz. Stutz will get the arm wrapped around him. Yeah, I think he was call. willing to take that one. I don't think he wanted any part of trying to guard Glaze <laughs> on that possession. Yeah, Glaze probably <laughs> would have went through him pretty easily there. 79-68, 11-point lead here for the Edge. Biggest lead of the evening. Early stages of the fourth quarter, though. And this is a chance here, Professor, we talked earlier. St. John's need the they, – they've got the, they got them by the throat. they got to squeeze a little yeah, bit now. Yeah, you got to put your foot on it now and just and end it. Ellenson, he tries a left-handed one off the glass. That's a tough shot to make there. Here's Jones now. Jones. Off the dribble, isolated by Skeet. Puts it outside for Keith. Keith drives to the basket. He gets some contact there. That foul is going to go on Henry. Yeah. And Keith will make a trip to the foul line once again. Keith just really, really good at getting his head out over his feet, but being able to stay on enough balance to get a good shot. And, and, and when you come at someone from that position, it's really hard to not foul. Some part of you is going to get interlocked with that offensive players coming at you leaning out over like that and then 
that's really how he gets a lot of things going his way. There's a big lineup on the floor now for Windsor. They've got Keith, DeMontre Harris, and Otley Jr. in there. Pretty yeah. big front court there for the Express. And that's, again, they're going with the little guards, though, Jones and Rayson, so they need to have some size to make up for that. Where are the big guards? I don't know if they have I any. don't know. I, I, all I <laughs> Frazier, see here tonight. Frazier really hasn't had a very yeah. good game today, so. Here's Skeet. Skeet kicks one down for Hinkle now. Hinkle tied up a little, going to kick it outside for Glaze. Glaze back for Hinkle. Hinkle gets Glaze spinning off the pick there, and that one's a nice, easy move there. Coach will like how that drew out on the offensive side. Jones, good drive to the basket there, and we've seen Jones drive all night, most times not with success. Good nice job there, and Desmond Lee. Lee in transition yeah. does a great job going to the basket, gets the hoop and the harm. And Lee will go to the line. Yeah, at the express end, you finally saw Jones able to finagle back to his right hand. And, and, and again, the, the express players are a lot better finishing with that hand, and so he's able to get it to go down. And then immediately, bang, and what you like about the reply from the edge is they don't mess around. They get it out of bounds. They get it down the floor right away. Lee gets fouled and, and finishes. Ten minutes left in this fourth quarter. St. John's up by 11, here's Jones. Jones outside for Keith. Jerry and Henry out on Keith, and you, good for Keith for hitting that shot, but if I'm St. John's, big fella, you can take that one all night long. Yeah, like I said, you, there's some shots you have to live with a little bit, and I think you have to make Keith prove that that's, unfortunately, he's been on the line so much that he's grooved his release a little. That's the only thing you would be concerned about. Hinkle, Hinkle, double team there as Harris stepped aside. Jerry and Henry on the inside doing a great job in the offensive boards there by Henry. Ransford Bremprong going to step into the game. Henry checks out, and Henry with some quality minutes here for St. John's. Yeah, he's, he's played well coming back into the lineup after sitting out last night, and he's definitely made a, a difference. Here's Lee. Lee over for Skeet. Skeet leaving one outside for Hinkle. Hinkle right away double teamed by Harris up top. Puts it down low for Skeet. Skeet drives into the paint. Ben Prong. Shot there. Can't get that one to fall. Grandy Glaze almost got the rebound, but big Devontre Harris pulls it down for Windsor. Racing. A little yeah. bit of contact there. Well, he reached out and grabbed hold of Lee and dragged him on top of him, hoping to get a whistle. Yeah, did not get it. Good non-call there. Here's Skeet now. Skeet outside for Lee. Lee, pick and roll there down low for Bremprong. Bremprong went up in the air, a lot of contact, play continues. Yeah, he just kind of threw the ball though again. You'd like to see him take a better shot. Keith drives to the basket and Keith with a nice kiss off the glass there and Keith is getting it done for Windsor. Windsor starting to hang around a little bit in this one. Shaquille Keith with 20 points on the night for Windsor. Yeah, this is a little bit of danger time here. The Express have gone away from Stutz. They've got a better defensive lineup on the floor, and, and the Edge are starting to struggle a little bit to find buckets. And, you know, if, if they're not careful, again, you let them back in the game. Bremprong goes up down low. He's rejected by Harris. Kick back in, though. Good rebound by Grandy Glaze. The yeah. Windsor Express bench are in sense. Shot clock buzzer went off. They say there was no shot. Yeah, but, but by that point in time, they had possession of the ball, so they needed to, once they had possession, it's a reset for them. Then the steal happens. It's a different possession. Maurice Jones answers back with a long three-point attempt for the Express. Here's Skeet now up top. Over for Hinkle. Hinkle with a long shot. That one falls short. St. John's big guns. It's a little struggling away here tonight. We see Jones going down through. I got to think. Doug, and this is an observation from afar. I think St. John's are fortunate that Jones played so much last night. He he doesn't look to have the same energy tonight at all. Well, I, I, you know, it's a little bit of both. I think he played a lot last night, and he may be a little bit tired. But like I said, I think they've done a good job of sending him in a direction that he's not as comfortable playing in. Last night he got right hand, right hand, right hand. It was all those little step backs off the right hand. Tonight he hasn't got the right hand at the same volume. No, I, yeah, I'm not sure how it's not a shooting foul, but they say it's not. Windsor Express putting a nice little run together here. Harris now for Jones. Jones 
Thought about shooting outside. Jones penetrates down low and he gets it off the glass. Yeah, they got to get him back off that right hand. Windsor puts the lead down to three. St. John's up by a Baker's dozen at one point. And Windsor chipping away at it. 7.15 left to go. Here's Desmond Lee. That one's going to rattle off the rim, but he gets the Cabot Tower bounce on that one. Falls down for the basket. Keith. He's guarded by Grandy Glaze on the outside. Keith puts the ball to the floor. Good quick feet by Glaze, keeping him. Glaze really up high on Keith. Bempong outside. Jones drives. Jones through. Can't get at the drop. Rebound, though, by Otley Jr., and he'll get the and one, and this is quite a run here by Windsor. Maybe a timeout should be called here by St. John's. Yeah, you're Let's gonna see. Have to, you're going to have to think about something because, uh, again, you got, you got Jones going to the left. He misses the finish going that direction, but you can't clean up the glass. you got, you got to be able to do both. you got to get the express going the way you want them so they're not finishing, and then you've got to limit them to one shot only. Otley Jr. completes the three-point play. St. John's lead cut to two. Johnson down to four. Johnson English. Glaze, Brampong, and Lee. This is probably one of the bigger lineups that St. John's can have in. Yeah, and, and they've had to go that way to try and deal with, with the Express, who play these big front lines. English, down low for Glaze. Glaze posted up by Harris, kicks it back for English. Carroll can't get that one to drop. And DeMontre Harris grabs the rebound for Windsor. Maurice Jones once again drives to the lane on the right-hand side yeah, where he wants to be. He's money on the right. He's money on the right. you got to ice that pick and roll or down it, whatever you want to say. You want to drive people the other way, get him on his left hand. Here's Johnson. Johnson, he comes to the line, and Alex Johnson with the layup. I was going to say, I don't know if Johnson's attempted a shot tonight. Very, very yeah, few and far between. Like I said, he's been a little bit uh, unaggressive offensively, but it's good to see him start going there because they're going to need him down the stretch. Good, strong move to the hoop there by Superman. Jones to the outside for Rayson. Rayson guarded by Lee. Rayson ball down. Ben Pong is there. Big guy went up the challenge, but Rayson kissed it off the glass and in. Tie ball game. 5.25 left to go in the fourth quarter. Johnson for Bempron. Back for Johnson. English sets the screen down low for Glaze. Glaze underneath the basket. Can't get that one to drop. Gets his own rebound. Goes up again, and he'll draw the foul this time on DeMontre Harris. Harris not happy with that one. I believe that might be his fifth of the game. Yeah, he's going to get warned here, but you know he's lucky to get away with slapping that ball away. I think if we hadn't gone through what we went through last night, that would have been a technical foul, and, and that's not what you want here with five minutes to go. Timeout call. Both teams knotted up at 89. 5.14 left to go. Buckle up your seatbelt, folks. We're going to have good finish here tonight at mile one. St. John's, Windsor. We'll be back.
Grandy Glay is going to go to the line here for St. John's. Both teams tied at 89. Yeah, he did a good job of getting his body on Harris's body in order to get that foul call. But again, he's not a great foul shooter. You'd like to see him get this one, though. Yeah, you'd like to see him get it and certainly not be smiling like the Cheshire Crat if he misses. But anyway, that's just the old school me. Yes, <laughs> that's all. Here's Jones now for Windsor. Jones out for Keith. Keith posted up by Jerry and Henry who's checked back in. Keith down low on Henry. He bounces off Henry. Good interception there. Yeah. Good defense there by Henry. Back down for Glaze. Glaze goes through. Hoop. Jones puts the foul on him. And yeah, that's I, probably a smart foul there by Jones. Yeah, I, I think you'd like to see Johnson challenge Jones and take that layup because Glaze is not a good foul shooter. And the minute he does it, like you love the hustle of Glaze to sprint the floor and be with Johnson. But, you know, that layback pass, unless Glaze is going to knock down these free throws, it's tough. That was certainly a uh, calculated foul there by Jones. Is yeah. Yeah, once Glaze caught that ball, he's going to have to shoot. He can shake his elbow all he wants. He needs to improve his form. <laughs> Big fell on the line. Now he's going to shoot his second here. And he'll get the hometown bounce in that one. Yeah. And St. John's will take the lead. Doesn't matter how it goes in as long as it goes in. Jones coming on the right side. No surprise there. Jones out for Keith. Sorry, that's Harris. Harris sets the pick, but Johnson works around it pretty good. Ball kicked out for Jones. Shot clock down to five. Jones is going to have to make something happen here. Jones inside, that's good defense there by yeah. Alex Johnson. Yeah. Johnson forces Jones into a poor shooting position. Johnson causes the turnover. Here comes Johnson now for St. John's. Johnson down for Desmond Lee. Lee back for Johnson. Johnson spins it around. Johnson's wide open, so he'll take the shot. Can't get it to drop, though, off the iron. Comes out. Yeah, you want Henry. You'd like him to be a little bit less reluctant about taking that shot. Uh, you'd like him to just, as soon as he sees that open space, pop it up. Jerry and Henry with the foul on Jones, and that's one there. He, he's got no choice. He's going to foul Jones. He can't keep up with him. Yeah. That's where the over, uh, what's the word? I don't want to say zealous, excited. Uh, just yeah. got to dial it back a little yeah, bit. Yeah, you just got to, instead of trying to pressure the ball there, just run down the floor, guard your man. Jones on the right side. They're going to input this one into Stutz. Stutz pushing off on Henry down low. Henry, pretty good yeah. defense there. He gave ground too easily, though. I think he's got to try and stand Stutz up. He can't let him go that deep into the paint. Down low for Glaze underneath the basket. Glaze rejected there by Demontre Harris. Good transition here. Keith comes through. That's going to be a goaltending call as Keith had that one. So Keith will go to the line for to finish a three-point play. And the Windsor Express have come all the way back from down. I believe it might have been 13. It was certainly 11. They've taken the lead here with 3.32 left to go in the fourth quarter. Yeah, St. John's just gone cold. They can't, like, you know, it, it all week, uh, I want to say weekend, but, you know, it's two midweek games. But both games, they haven't been able to make shots. And, and it's a make or miss game. If you're not, if you're not making the other team will, and, and that was just an unfortunate uh, series of bad decisions there terms of not wrapping Keith up and then uh, goaltending the shot. Off the miss on the foul line, Windsor get the rebound. Opportunity to open up a five point lead here. Keith drives a big rebound there by Demontre Harris. And yeah. Harris puts it back, Coach Jeff Dunlap. Certainly not liking what he's seeing yeah. now. He's gonna call a timeout, 3.18 I mean, left to go. You, you said last night that, that St. John's really did a good job of cleaning up the glass much better than they have in the past, but tonight it's been a struggle. They've Again, they've just given up way too many offensive rebounds. They've gotten the, the stops where they needed them in the sense of making them miss shots, but they haven't been able to finish the play and grab the rebound when it's available. 3.18 left to go, five-point game, Windsor leading 95-90.
318 left to go. St. John's with a few changes to the lineup. We see Ramster Bremprong check back in the game as well as Charles Hinkle. And they'll complement the lineup with Superman Alex Johnson, Desmond Lee, and Carl English. Yeah. English catches, fires, and there's the play there for St. John's. Carl ran around inside, caught and released. Yeah, either, either English or Hinkle are going to have to step up here in this last three minutes if, if the edge won't have a chance to win. Stutz moves to the outside for Keith. Shaquille Keith guarded by English. Keith trying to back up down low. Bembron getting ready to come over to help out. Good defense there by St. John's. Yep. Getting ready for the double team on Keith. You know, like about Keith, he don't just post up inside. He'll start from outside the three-point line. Yeah. He'll drive it down your throat if you let him. Stutz, long shot, just fires that one off the glass. That's a 24-second shot clock violation. But Johnson will pick up the rebound and go coast to coast for St. John's. Yeah. Johnson with an easy bucket there for the edge. Jones isolated on the left side with Johnson. Jones, double team momentarily. You're going to kick it outside for Keith. Keith drives down to the lane. You got a foul on English down low, and Keith doing a good job of penetrating, forcing St. John's to put the big guy to the line. Shaquille Keith last night struggled a little bit from the free throw line tonight. He's been seven for eight from the line. Yeah, and again, the edge may have to consider trying to deny him the ball, try and limit his touches. I think you don't, you don't necessarily want to let him get that ball with that head of steam going at the rim. They may need to actually try and keep the ball out of his hands. Fans getting into it a little here, trying to distract Keith. It seemed to work on the first one. At least that's what the fans will take credit for anyway. They get louder on number two. Keith drains the second, 96 and 94 in favor of Windsor. Here's Johnson now. Johnson setting up down low, looking to find English coming around the side. English kicks it back out for Johnson. Almost turned it over though. Johnson quick to come out for it. Here's English wide open on the side. Couldn't get that one to drop though. And Bremprong gets a foul on. Yes, Bremprong is going to get the foul. That'll be the sixth team foul for St. John's. They're one away from being in the bonus. Actually, that's going to that's put them in the bonus. The bonus. That yeah, is the that's seven. a bad foul. That's a bad foul. At, at, with two minutes to go, 98 feet away from the other net, you, can't, you, you, got, you got to have enough control not to commit that foul. So, chance for... Jones to step up to the line. Jones, a great free throw shooter for the Windsor Express. Windsor and St. John's in a dandy here tonight. Windsor looking to come in and get a two game sweep from the edge here at mile one. And these two teams gonna meet again in a little over a week's time in Windsor on the 20th of January. So certainly gonna be familiarity with these two squads and I don't think they're going to be out buying each other root beers after this one. <laughs> no, no, no. Desmond Lee. Lee up top going to kick it out for Johnson. Johnson's isolated by race and Johnson gets to the inside and gets the roll and you called it professor. You said Johnson got to get more involved offensively and he's doing it. Yeah and now they got to find an answer for Keith at this end. I think they've done a decent job on the other players late but they got to find an answer for Keith here. Here's a turnover by Jones. Desmond Lee has it. Lee comes down through, and Lee will draw the foul off Rayson. That's going to send Lee to the line. A chance for St. John's to tie it up from the line with 1.26 left to go. And again, your only concern is that Lee is not a particularly strong foul shooter. He's uh, uh, you know, in that early 60s range, about 62% on the year. Uh, but they need him to come through here. Lee settles down from the line, sits the first one. That's going to hit the back of the iron and bounce loose. Lee will refocus and set for number two. Lee sinks the second, brings St. John's within one. Here's Stutz now. Stutz isolated by English up top. Stutz trying to come through. Stutz gets the bounce, but couldn't get it to fall. 
And Hinkle's going to move it down the floor for St. John's. Hinkle finds Johnson. Johnson spins away back out for Hinkle. Hinkle wide open look for three. And one. Charles Hinkle drops one from long distance and gives St. John's the lead. That's a big shot, Doug. Yeah, I, and Coach Jones for the Express is probably a little concerned that they've gone away from Keith here the last couple possessions. You'd like to see them him at least touch the ball. Jones drives down to the right side. He gets penetration and the foul and the hoop, sorry. Coach Dunlap going to call a timeout for St. John's. 100 to 100. Both teams knotted up in a dandy here tonight. 49 seconds left to go. Timeout, St. John's. So in the last minute of play, all tied up at 100. Who are St. John's looking to go to here, Doug? Well, I think they've had some success with that little pin down screen on the side. Uh, so I think you could see maybe Jerry and Henry uh, setting that for Hinkle or English, or you could potentially, if they want to run something a little bit with a little bit more movement, that English Hinkle pick and roll has caused some problems as well. Desmond Lee going to inbound the ball. Back for Johnson now. Johnson's going to control up top, as he has most of the game here tonight. Hinkle steps out. Johnson steps around that screen. Johnson gets some help from the outside. English shakes off his man for Henry. Back for English. And English, oh. that is a clutch shot there and a from Carroll English. Yeah, and a fantastic screen by Jerry and Henry. Like, that's why you love the kid. Like, he, he, they went inside out a couple of times, and then when he, he threw it back out to English on the move, he stepped out and screened off Keith so that he couldn't get back and contest that shot. Big players make big plays, Doug, and that's a pretty big play there off the hands of Carl English. Yeah. 35 seconds remain. Timeout here for Windsor, 103-100. And looking at Windsor, you got to think that obviously Keith's been a weapon all night. Stutz is a shooter. He's a threat at any time, and Maurice Jones has certainly found his touch in this fourth quarter. Yeah. A lot of weapons for Windsor to choose from here. Yeah, so I, I think what you may see is four shooters around Keith and maybe give Keith the chance to isolate and penetrate with the idea being whichever, whoever he draws the help from, uh, you're going to kick it out to his man for the three-point shot. The only thing I would say, if I'm the edge, I'm playing with that extra point. I can give up two, you can't give up three. So if they isolate someone and they go to the net, they got to make the layup. I was going to say, this might seem silly, but don't you want them to put the ball in Keith's hand and have him drive down, eat some clock up here, give him the two? Yeah, yeah. and, and the only thing you got to be careful of is Keith with that, the way he plays in that big body, if he gets on you and you get a whistle. And, draw the contact. Yeah, yeah, so, I mean, that's the only concern you have, and that's why you might just kind of offer some token resistance, but basically if he goes, let him go, and, 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 and we need to make free throws. Coach Dunlap shown some trust and faith here in Jerry and Henry inside. Henry sometimes gets a little outside of himself here, but he's played very well in the minutes he's played tonight for St. John's. Yeah. I'm a little surprised that Demontre Harris stays on the floor here, but I guess they want him out there as an offensive rebounder. Ball inbound to Jones. Johnson was tripped up there. He's back into the play though right away. Johnson on Jones. Racing outside, gonna put it outside for Harris. Jones, long three ball attempt. That goes nowhere. Demontre Harris Grab got ball, away yeah. with a push down low. English, long bomb down the floor. Whistle goes though. Henry thought he was going in for a little showtime there, but the whistle went. Demontre Harris got away with a big push down there. Yeah, there was a whole bunch of things that went on there. Harris 
They went high pick and roll with Harrison Jones. Jones really traveled into the shot that he took. It was not a good shot. Harris gives a little nudge, gets a chance, but on his follow shot, he throws it as well. He, again, trying to make it look like he's fouled rather than just make the shot, and they're able to clean the rebound after that one. Winds are looking to get real big now as Parker's going to check back into the game, although he's taking out Harris. Yeah, and, and again, but I, I just... Harris is fouled out, actually. Yeah, I, I just think that on that possession, I don't know if the high pick and roll with Harris and Jones was the right play. I think, I think, and ice, you know, like I said, isolate. Sometimes you get too fancy. Just they've had a hard time guarding Keith. Isolate Keith. Let him go. If anybody steps off the man, pop it out for a jump shot. I think that would have been a smarter way to go on that last play. Late in the game, if you want someone at the line for St. John's, it's certainly Carol yeah. English. He goes up. He's yeah. Mr. Automatic from the line for St. John's. Yeah. Henry chasing Jones down the floor. Jones going to drive through. Yeah, Jones and that's gets all you had to do. Just stand in there. Rejected by Bremprong. He's yeah. looking for the contact. Didn't get it. And that'll Lee, do it. Down the floor. Lee coming <laughs> to the basket. Parker <laughs> comes over and denies him. That's some pretty good defense there. Yeah. Long, that'll do it. Long shot by Jones at the buzzer. And the folks at mile one got their money's worth tonight, Doug. Yeah. Final thoughts on the game. It, it was a very gutsy effort by the edge. That Their two best players, English and Hinkle, struggled all game long to make anything. Uh, with three minutes to go, we kind of said they have to step up, and they did. you got to give Hinkle hit the big three, Carl hit a big three, and that, and that was really the difference in the game. So final score here at mile one tonight. St. John's 105, Windsor 103, Carl English. Coming up big when it counted the most. For Doug Partridge, I'm Steve Power. Good night from Mile One Center in St. John's. Please join us again this weekend as the Kitchener-Waterloo Titans come to town to play the St. John's Edge.